Hi, this is Dr. Rob Silas. Welcome to another episode of Carb Addiction Doc. Today we're going to talk about something very pragmatic, very easy, and yet so misunderstood and so, so screwed up. The title of today's episode is How to Eat Vegetables. <laughs> it sounds kind of silly. You put them in your mouth, you chew them, and you swallow them. But we've kind of screwed that up completely. And we've transformed how we eat vegetables completely. Number one, vegetables are pretty much plants that grow above or in the ground. There's no magic to that. And they're all healthy. All vegetables are healthy. All vegetables are healthy, irrespective of what's in them. The problem is sometimes our relationship with them causes us problems. So when we look at vegetables from an addiction perspective, and we're going to look at it from an addiction and a nutrition perspective, what the nutritionists forget about and completely ignore or really don't even know about are addictions. The title of my YouTube channel is Carb Addiction Doc. So what we've got to consider first and foremost, in my opinion, is the addictive element of carbohydrates. Okay, so if you're an otherwise healthy, normal human being, all vegetables are fine. As long as you eat them the way they came out of the ground, the more we transform them, the more we process those vegetables, the more those vegetables are going to be harmful rather than beneficial. The primary goal of eating vegetables is not for their macronutrient or their calorie content. Yes, vegetables have some calories, some more than, more than others, but the primary goal of eating vegetables, and it's not for the fiber, it's not for the fiber, the primary reason for eating vegetables is because they taste good. They're enjoyable to eat for some people. And the other reason we eat vegetables is for their micronutrient content. Vegetables are really a backup food for human beings. Vegetables are a backup food for human beings. Human beings, and I got this from Tim Noakes for the, in the first place, not sure where he got it from, but I always give credit for places I heard things. And Tim talks about human beings currently being omnicarnivores, omnicarnivores. Our intestine, our health is best suited to a carnivore diet. That's another episode. But the omni part is the ability to use vegetables to sustain ourselves nutritionally and to provide certain nutrient elements from time to time when we do not have access to a carnivorous diet. So vegetables are fine, okay? Now, let's add to that someone with a carbohydrate addiction, a fat person, a diabetic person. There are certain vegetables that have a very high carbohydrate content. However, what the dietitians do out there is that they calculate the carbohydrate content of vegetables in a laboratory after they've been broken down into their individual components. They do not consider human biology. So from a human biology perspective, one of the reasons why we are more carnivorous than, omniv than, than vegetarian is because the human intestinal tract has lost the ability to absorb certain nutrients and certain calories from those vegetable materials. We don't have the bacteria in our intestine that vegetarian animals use to break those down. So therefore, any form of leafy vegetables are safe to eat at any meal in any quantity you want. You never, ever, ever have to consider, even in a ketogenic diet, the caloric content or the carbohydrate content of leafy vegetables. That is so different from the keto evangelists out there that are on diets based on carbohydrate content. In the addiction model, I've never ever met a fat person who after a rough day rushed to the fridge for broccoli. It doesn't happen. And it's absolutely fine to eat leafy vegetables in abundance. When you're a carbohydrate addict, the vegetables to watch out for are rice and potatoes of any form. I don't care if it's a baked potato, if it's mashed potatoes, if it's a fries. Stay away from rice and potatoes because there is an addictive element to that. And then there's a whole class of plant foods that are absolutely on the no list, not in any way, shape or form. And those are the grains. The grains are farmed products. And what we do with the grains is we typically powder them or we transform them and that makes the carbohydrates extractable. So the grains are absolutely on the no list. And the human intestinal tract and the human immune system gets damaged when you eat grains. Please understand that. This whole thing of gluten. Well, gluten is an antigen. It's something that the immune system reacts to in abundance and harms us. Gluten occurs in those grains. And there's some grains without them. But stay away from any grain products. And usually what we do is we use the grain products as vehicles to put food in our face. The bun on the burger, the bread on the sandwich, the tortilla, the rice, the potatoes. We use it to scoop real food into our, into our face. So the key thing about vegetables is vegetables are free. I never consider the carbohydrate content of any vegetables. They're free with any meal. 
in the quantity you choose to eat them because the human body won't let you eat too many of them. Absolute no's, no rice, no potatoes, no grains. And if you keep it that simple, this is something that can be sustainable for the rest of your life. We never consider portions. We never consider calories. Those are things that mathematical formulas that we human beings created to quantify our limits on carbohydrate consumption. When you're eating real vegetables, there are no limits. So do not consider the caloric or carbohydrate content of vegetables. They're free anytime. No rice, no potatoes, no grains. The one questionable thing is baked potatoes and some of the squashes and the pumpkins. When you're trying to get into ketosis, you can limit your amounts on that. But down the road, you're absolutely fine to eat them. Same with beans. Yeah, beans. Oh my God, don't eat beans, say all the keto evangelists. Beans are fine. Nobody pigs out on beans, but don't put the rice with them. It's very simple. It's very sustainable. Vegetables are fine to eat. But remember this. Human beings are primarily genetically and evolutionarily designed primarily to be carnivores. Vegetables are fillers for taste and at times when we don't have access to adequate carnivorous diets. They help us to survive. And if you remember that and you use them in the same way, you're going to be absolutely fine. And that's where we clash very heavily in the carbohydrate addiction model with the keto diet model. If you have to use a calculator, if you have to count numbers to stay on a diet, the diet will fail. I can look at food and decide when and where I'm going to eat it. One last comment about vegetables. Eat them the way God and nature made them. You can heat them up a little bit, but other than that, eat them the way God and nature made them. Don't juice them. Don't modify them to the point that you cannot look at them and tell what they were to begin with. Because that processing, that modification, when you take kale, kale is just this leaf that goes in your face and comes out your butt. But when you take kale and you juice it and you put it into some smoothie, what you've done is you've done what a vegetarian's intestine and the bacteria in that intestine does to kale. It's extracted the sugar. Now you've taken kale and turned it into ice cream. And yes, your body can absorb some of the sugar from that when it can't absorb it from the leaf itself. So don't transform your vegetables into all these purees and all these things. You're extracting the wrong things from your vegetables. Let your gut do what's, what it's evolutionarily designed to do, to use vegetables to the extent it can to extract nutrients, maybe a little bit of macros, uh, primarily carbohydrates, a little bit of protein from the beans, and poop the rest out. That's the way to eat vegetables, and they are non-addictive, so they're fine to eat.